and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to Season 2 of the Cooler League. So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to add to Season 2. We're going to be adding the Thermal Right Frozen Magic 360 and according to the box this is the scenic edition not sure what that means but when I looked on Amazon to buy this um, particular cooler for the pricing it basically says that it's I can't see anywhere it says scenic so for me it's just the frozen magic 360 so as always with the uh, cooler reviews we're going to do um, do the install and then we'll do like a, a a, a kind of a conclusion on the install, give my thoughts and, and you know generally how the install was, where the shortfalls were, where the good things were, that kind of thing. Then I will go through all of the usual scores and graphs and things like that, show you where the cooler is on the old Lee table. And then last but not least, we will then I will then give you my final thoughts and conclusion, pretty much to say is this cooler worth buying? You know, in the current market with you know, prices being what they are, and we're not knowing where prices are going to go up and go down. The conclusion I'm going to give you at the end will be based on current pricing as it is at filming, and so please keep that in mind. But I'll go over that in more detail at the end. All right, without further ado, let's get on with the install. So the first thing of note is that you've got to adjust depending on the Intel socket for the back plate. The, the AMD one uh, install relies on the actual installed plastic clips to hook onto so you only need a back plate for Intel it's got basically two markings for 1151 and 1700 and they're very well defined and you just have to literally pull it back like so and it's now in ready for install for 1700 The bags are pretty well marked when there's part specific for 1700, it's got like 17xx or it's got 20xx or it's got 15xx, so it's pretty decent. On the bottom of the pump, on the bottom of the block, there's a nice little arrow for putting on the plate, and on the bottom of the plate, there's an arrow there, so you have to put it there and then slide it into place, which actually goes on very easily, which is quite nice. So install wise, yeah, it's very similar to the other Thermalright uh, AOs I've installed. You've got a black plate that has an, uh, for Intel that has an adjustable. Um, you can move the pins so they can go to the different holes and the different types of board, whether it be 1700 or whatever. Then you push that through. Then you've got like plastic grommets that go on, and they actually hold that in place, which is nice because. You know, in a typical case, you can put, lay, it on the, lay it on a bench or lay it on the table or whatever, and that will kind of hold it in place so you can get access to them. But having like plastic gobbins that go in and hold it in place is really good because then you don't have to worry about moving the case around when you're putting it in. The only thing I would say is that, oh, I'm sorry, forgot one. Um, so there's a the usual plate that goes on the bottom of the pump. It's, you've got the two, but it's got a nice little uh, line on each. It's got an hour on each. You know how to put it on and line it up, and it's good to go. Before I forget that, 
Then the last thing I would say is that when you put the cooler on, you then have little screws, have little bolts to screw on. Keeping the actual back plate flat because obviously you've got the back plate for the CPU underneath for the hot for the retention mechanism. So keeping that even and trying to get an even compression of the pump on there. It's not the simplest of tasks, it's not most difficult, but I think it could have been better if, say, the screws, so the little bolts that you put on would have been spring-loaded or something like that, which would have helped making sure that you get a nice, even distribution. So that's the only thing I would say. Otherwise, for installing the radiator, it's the usual, where you have to screw it onto the case, etc., etc. But as AIO installs go, pretty straightforward. All right, that's um, the install uh, covered. Let's get on with the old graphs and scores and tables and we can find out where it sat in the league compared to all the other coolers. Base temps. The thermal right Frozen Magic 360 had a base temp of 21 degrees. At the time the actual cooler and pump wasn't really making any noise. You could actually see the blades on the fans going around so there wasn't really much going on. So while 21 seems a bit higher than some of the others you know, it, it wasn't that high, um, realistically. Um, so, yeah, not a bad result. And that lack of activity is reflected in bass sound, because the bass sound <laughs> was virtually not there. It was only 34 decibels, which is only beaten by the Noctua Chromax, which isn't a surprise, because Noctua are known for being super-duper silent. So, yeah, it even was quieter than its big brother, the Frozen Edge. So... Yeah, it did very well. And even though the temperature was a little bit higher than the Frozen Edge, which had a base temperature of 20, I think the slightly cool... The sl I'm not sure if I'd sort of, you know, go for really a slightly cooler or the basin. At the end of the day, it's, it's an idle anyway, so it's, and it's not really that high, so it's not really going to be that much of a benefit anyway. The score. The, the Frozen Magic kind of finished just a little bit lower than the Frozen Edge and a little bit lower than the up here Series 2 and the Bits Power Phantom. Um, the scores generally have been going down even though some of the coolers have been having you know really good performance on, with, with the temperature. I'm not going to spoil what the temperature was for this but I'll give you a clue it wasn't thermal throttling. Um, so I got concerns and uh, spoiler alert this will probably be the last video of Season 2 and the next cooler will be for season three, of which I'll include this cooler. I'm probably going to move from a 12900K to a 14900K purely because I think for the 14900K is pretty much the top level when it comes to heat these days because the more modern CPUs seem to be looking at power optimization these days and aren't generating as much heat. So the 14900K will be worried at. But the actual score it got this time is 27252. Which is, you know, it's at the lower middle of the pack, but a lot of, you'll probably notice in the graph, a lot of the scores are now grouping around the same. So I think changing up the processor, going for a different, you know, going for a different challenge is going to give us some of these coolers that are all bunched up some, you know, a different challenge. So I'm going to probably test, if not all, but probably most of the coolers that we've actually got in season two, and then I'll add more, obviously, for season three. Max temp. I didn't want to spoil it for you, but it only hits 76, which matches the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite, and it's basically only, it's not that much more than the Frozen Edge. <clears throat> where where the, the Frozen Edge is, like, as I said, the base temperature is about the same, the noise is about the same, they're both, but you can see the max temp from the Frozen Magic isn't quite as good as the um, Frozen Edge, but the Frozen Edge to be fair, is slightly more expensive. So realistically, you know, at 76 degrees, it's well below thermal throttling. So from a temperature point of view, you know, it's pretty good. It's right up there. It's only beaten by two coolers. So for the price you pay for this, which is, you know, $53, you can't really knock it. Uh, max sound. A big difference here between this and the Frozen Edge was the actual max sound that it made. The Frozen Edge Max sound was 46.3. This sounded like the little engine that could because it went up to a 52 decibels. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of other, other coolers that are worse of it, including the Peerless Assassin and a lot of the other coolers below, but it's still quite considerably uh, more than, say, the Frozen Edge. So with the cooler performance, it being quieter, 
and only really probably five or six dollars difference between the Frozen Edge and the Frozen Magic, you've got to ask the question, is that six, five or six dollars worth more for the better performance and it being quieter? Yeah, I'd, I'd tend to lean that way, but you know, we'll cover that more in the final conclusion. Scoring ranges. They've not changed. They're probably going to change. Uh, be the same all the way through. Uh, when I move to season three, as I mentioned earlier, I'll probably review these. Um, I think with the scores, because we had that initial score that was a bit of an exception, which was for the uh, Peerless Assassin, I think it was, or whichever one of the Thermal Right Coolers, um, it, it's kind of out on its own, so therefore the ranges tended to be not great in terms of the actual coolers. We're all getting around the same score. So we're going into season three. I'm going to re review these ranges and I'll probably adjust those. Some of the others like price and max sound and some of the others I think will say the same, but definitely the score is going to change. And this is another reason for moving to season three because I've had to split the league table um, because it's getting to the point where there was too many for once, uh, one, one page and you I couldn't get them all up on screen at once with you being able to see. Um, so you can see that the Frozen Magic has got 24 points, uh, which only puts it five off the top and puts it in a really good position to say a lot of other coolers. It's one point off the becoming off becoming a serious recommendation. I, I think, to be honest with you, the the um, because it's the design, it's the you know the the fans haven't got RGB. The pump has got RGB, but it's very basic. I think if it had been a bit more of you know a bit more oomph to it, a bit more even with their RGB fans, that'd put it over into the 25. But again, at the price you're paying, which is only $53, you can't really complain that much. But still, with the temperature performance you got out of it, and at the price, I think 24 points is a really good result. The bottom end of the table. Not exactly what you call the Hall of Shame, I mean, apart from maybe the Deep Cool Assassin 4, of which I'm still not convinced was, uh, you know, a dodgy version I've got, because looking at other reviews, it did very well. But the, Als the Alsai, or whatever you want to call it, the M120D, oh boy. Let's put it this way, I will not be throwing either of those two coolers at the 4900K, because, yeah, we know it's not going to win well. Right, the cooler ana ana analysis. Now on, on this, you may have noticed as, as the season's gone on, I'm keeping the order of which they finish in the lead table. So I've not changed it based on price or anything else like that. But if we look at the Frozen Magic 360, it got 20 points without price, which puts it at a cost per point of $2.64, which is pretty reasonable value. If you look at it, how it compares to the Frozen Edge, it's slightly more expensive per point, but isn't that bad really. But if you compare it to say the, the firm will take to fair, it's going to really cheaper. And then if we move on to max temp, which as we discussed was 76, you can see that the degrees below 100, it's $2.20, which again is slightly more expensive than the frozen edge. Um, but it's still really good value for what it is as an AIO. If you look at it compared to say the Dark Rock Elite, which got the same temperature performance, it's pretty much close to being 50% of the cost of that per degree below 100, which when, and they're a good comparison because they hit the same max temp. So for me, you know, if you're comfortable in AIO, AIO you want, you're finding stalling in AIO, it's pretty hard to overlook. Although the only real thing to keep in mind is its big brother, the Frozen Edge. All right, with that in mind, let's go on to my final thoughts and conclusion. So final thoughts and conclusion. What do I actually think of this cooler? I think it's a pretty damn good AIO. I think the cost, uh, it's a little bit higher than say some of the other coolers that paid for previously, but I think that in the current market, that's to be expected. As I mentioned earlier in the video, um, I'm basing conclusions off price and whether to buy this based off the cost of when it is when I'm filming. Not when I got the cooler, or if you're viewing this in say two months time and tariffs are a thing and prices has gone up, I don't know. I'm basing it purely on the price when I'm filming. So keep that in mind. Um, but for me, it, the only problem that this cooler has got is the other thermal right coolers. You know, it's finished behind another thermal right AIO, and therefore you've got to look at the price of this and think, should I buy that one instead? And to be perfectly honest, the answer is yes. Now, however, if the region where you live, or for whatever reason, that cooler is not available, if we so we take that off the table, is this cooler worth buying? Uh, the, the simple answer is yes. It kept 
a 12900K under 80 degrees. Some of the other coolers are frolled. This didn't have to work that hard. It made a bit of noise, but it wasn't too bad. But for me, you know, it's a good cooler. And if this is your option you're looking at, you'd be, you wouldn't go wrong to uh, if you wanted to buy this. So for me, it gets a big thumbs up. All right. I hope that all of this was helpful. Um, please um, subscribe if you wouldn't be mind. I've only got, I thought, said in the last video, 1600. I've actually only got 1300 subscribers. So the more the merrier. If you like this video, please put a like on it. If you didn't dislike this video, uh, if you didn't like the video, if you put a dislike on, please, in the comments down below, leave a message to tell me why you didn't, where I can improve, how the video can move forward. If you did like the video, but you've still got some questions, also leave the comments down below. I try and respond to comments as quickly as I can. So either way, if you're inclined to ask a question or want to make a comment, please do. All right. Oh, and if you do subscribe, nearly forgot this one, hit the bell icon because my cadence of videos is only around one a month. So then you get notified when the next one comes out. I don't always meet that cadence. I can go within the month different times depending on work and stuff like that. So if you do hit the uh, notification icon, then when my next video comes out, which sneak peek will be a, a case review, um, you will get notified of when it comes out. All right. That's all the YouTube stuff. Uh, again, I hope you hope, hope the, you found this video helpful, and as always, take care.